Imagine you live in a universe where legends and tall tales are all true, where some of the most unexpected answers to historical questions might be discovered. You might have heard about this peculiar region, which was once home to the Euphrates River. But suddenly, something truly extraordinary has emerged from the parched riverbank, a sight so stunning that not even the most knowledgeable people can adequately describe it. Hello viewers, welcome to Unexplained History. You won't soon forget this video as we explore the Golden Mountains, which came into being as a result of the Euphrates River becoming dry. You won't believe your eyes. Let's start it. The Euphrates used to be the largest river in Western Asia, but a lot of the Middle East has lost a lot of fresh water quickly over the past 10 years. New information shows that the Tigris-Euphrates Basin already has a dry area, which is getting even drier as people use more water for drinking and farming. The study team looked at the Tigris and Euphrates River basins, which include parts of Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Iran. They found that between 2003 and 2009, 144 cubic kilometers of fresh water were lost, which is about the same as the size of the Dead Sea. The pumping of groundwater from underground aquifers was to blame for about 60% of the loss. When a drop reduces the amount of water that can be taken from the surface, irrigators and other people use groundwater. Sumer, where civilization began circa 3000 BC, was watered by the Euphrates River. Mary, Sippar, Nippur, Shurapak, Uruk, Gur, and Eridu were prominent riverside cities. Kara and Murat meet to form it. The Kara comes from the Armenian highlands, north of Erzurum in eastern Turkey, and the Murat from the southwest of Mount Ararat and north of Lake Van. The upper Euphrates flow southeast over Syria and Iraq via steep cliffs and gorges. The Kabur and Balak rivers feed the Euphrates in eastern Syria. Turkey begins on both rivers. No water enters the Euphrates downstream. The Tigris and the river form the Arvan Shatil Arab north of Bashar in southern Iraq. The Persian Gulf receives Arvand or Shat al Arab. Bashar's wetlands were formed by the river's multiple channels. To eliminate marsh Arab rebels, Saddam Hussein's administration drained most of the marshes in the 1990s. The drainage policy has changed since the 2003 Iraq invasion, but it's unclear if the marshes will improve. The Euphrates only allows shallow draft boats. These boats can reach Hit, Iraq, 1,930 kilometers upstream and 53 meters above sea level. Rocks and rapids prevent business use above Hit. Northeastern Turkey's mountains flood every year when the snow melts. New upper reaches dams and reservoirs have reduced flooding. River boats can use an 885-kilometer channel between the Euphrates and Tigris. J. Famiglietti says that GRAS data show that the Tigris and Euphrates river basins are losing groundwater storage at a worrisome rate, which is the second fastest rate on Earth after India. After the drought of 2007, the rate was especially high. Still, the demand for freshwater keeps going up, and the region's water management is not coordinated because different people have different ideas about how international laws should be interpreted. The Euphrates will dry up, revealing treasures that will cause war. The Euphrates will disclose the gold mountain soon. Then, nobody should take anything. The Euphrates is draining. Hydroelectric facilities in upstream Turkey and Iran are choking the rivers that have fed Mesopotamia for millennia. Seasonal droughts and poor management threaten the lives of thousands of Arikas who live along these historic rivers. Climate change hits this area hard. According to the study, Iraq's precipitation will drop by 15 to 20 percent this century, reducing the Tigris and Euphrates rivers' water by up to 73 percent. Due to low water levels, Persian Gulf tides are polluting barley and wheat farms and killing cattle in river deltas. Farmers lose their livelihoods. Many arrivals to cities want to remain anonymous, making displacement data harder to gather. However, reports from the ground show that new social tensions are growing between city inhabitants and rural transplants. Refugees seeking jobs in Basra, Iraq, 
have built plastic shanty towns on the city's outskirts. Newcomers may need time to adjust to the fact that their employment is usually temporary, such as truck driving or construction, and may not suit their needs. Basher residents believe that newcomers drain public resources and bring criminal activity and incompatible customs. Worse, municipal officials refuse to completely integrate migrants, creating tensions. Southern Iraqi arrivals are blamed for power disruptions and fuel shortages. Refugee numbers are unlikely to decrease soon. Due to salinity rising north from the Gulf of Mexico, 85 miles of the riverbank are now barren. Climate experts warn that the situation in southern Iraq is just a precursor to future disasters. 12 million Iraqis and Syrians will be without food, water, or energy within months, according to aid agencies. Egypt, with 2.5 times Iraq's population, is facing a worse refugee crisis. Ethiopia and Sudan are finishing a massive hydroelectric project on a Nile tributary. According to an Egyptian scientific survey, the project could destroy 75% of Egypt's fish farms, displacing 30 million people and creating the world's largest refugee crisis. Even if the project were canceled, Egypt would still suffer the same population growth and environmental dryness as most other countries in the region. Mediating water-sharing protocols can delay the devastation, but a lasting solution requires more than Middle Eastern cooperation. While conflicts and elections dominate the news cycle, our global economy is becoming more dependent on fossil fuels like oil and natural gas, and the window of opportunity to change is shrinking. Despite starting as a drought, climate change will upset social and cultural norms. Iraq's fragile society shows early signs of climate-induced instability. However, desperate people would do anything to provide for their families. For 15 years, ISIS has preyed on victims of poor harvests and poverty, promising them instant cash and safety when governments couldn't. Other terrorist groups may act similarly. Droughts lead to displacement, tension, crime, and recruiting. Thus, the riverbanks where civilization began 8,000 years ago may be signaling a collapse now. It would be ironic. Like the Tigris, there is controversy over who can utilize the river and how. Turkey's southeastern Anatolia project will have 22 dams and 19 power units by 2005. The first dam was completed in 1990. Southeast Turkey's Kurdish minority is nonetheless unhappy due to economic difficulties. The 1973 Tabaka Dam, also known as the Euphrates Dam, creates Lake Assad, which waters cotton farms in Syria. Syria has dammed two tributaries and is developing a third. Saddam Hussein neglected Iraq's seven dams. Since Ba'ath Iraq's 2000 and three demise, water use has again been a priority. That's it for today. We hope this amazing find touches you as much as it did us. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Please share our video and press the bell icon for more updates.